Welcome back, guys. We should be finishing up our last bit of content in regards to senses. So let's see where we are. Okay, so where we left off, we were talking about the eye. In regards to the eye, uh, obviously, this is one of the most important diagrams to be aware of. Most of these structures you need to be comfortable with, not all of them, but most. So be prepared for that. Okay, a little bit more about the eyes that we need to discuss. Rods and cones. So remember how we mentioned how the retina is the photosensitive layer of your eyes. It's what's going to translate uh, light into an electrical stimulus. Now, those photoreceptors that are translating all that stuff, those photoreceptors actually are two different names. Like We have two different types of them. We have rods and cones. Rods are responsible for vision at low light. So these are the these are the structures that help you see at, at night. They don't have the best spatial acuity, so it's kind of difficult to see like distance and your surroundings with your rods. Cones, on the other hand, and these are the easy ones to remember because cones provide you with color vision. Remember cone color? Just think alliteration. Cones provide you with color vision and have high spatial acuity. As far as it's concerned, we have decent night vision, nothing substantial, especially compared to other animals who have a much higher rod percentage. We just have a higher cone percentage, so we can see a wider range of color. Nearsightedness and farsightedness, we got to talk about that too. Nearsightedness and farsightedness, literally it's in the name. If you're nearsighted, that means you can see things close to you, but things that are further away from you, it's harder to see. I technically am a little nearsighted. Um, granted, my vision's not that bad, but it does help sharpen my sight if I'm looking further away. Uh, this is also known as myopia. We do need to know that name. Myopia is the same thing as nearsighted. Farsightedness is when closer objects are blurry. Uh, this is also known as hyperopia. So again, myopia, hyperopia, you need to know what those stand for. That's how you're going to see it coming up in the future. Some classic optical illusion situation here. Optical illusions are not related to the eyes as far as like issues with the eyes, but it's more so how we perceive stimuli. So it's perception based. For example, you can look at a picture like this and you'll see, sometimes you'll see a face, right? With the eyes and the nose. Or sometimes you'll see a woman walking in a park. So it just depends on what you see. Similar situation here this is another classic optical illusion. The color of these strawberries, I see these and they look red. Some other people see them differently, right? Because of the tint that's on the on the color, uh, it gives off a perception. Um, it messes with your perception. These are, these are actually uh, brown or black. They're covered in chocolate. These are chocolate-covered strawberries. So it is funny to me just uh, how this can affect it. You know, that whole blue gold dress thing, same thing. Lighting makes a big difference in how you see things. Uh, lastly, one of the last things we got to discuss, disorders with senses. This is a primary disorder we need to be aware of. Sensory processing disorder or SPD. This is a condition in which the brain, so make sure you know that it's a brain problem, not an eye or ear or nose or any other organ problem. This is a condition in which the brain has trouble receiving and responding to information that comes in through the senses. Now, these symptoms can be on a spectrum. Some people are unresponsive, meaning they don't experience that sense at all. Some people are extreme reactions. So imagine you have a dial from 0 to 10, 0 being unresponsive and 10 being way too much. Some people it goes to 12, right? So the examples I like to give is like if your sense of pain was turned off, that could be really problematic because you'll never know that you're hurting yourself. But on the opposite spectrum, if your sense of pain is in an extreme sense, you could stub your toe and that could be so much pain that you pass out. So you got to be very careful. Some other examples of oversensitivity with regards to SPD could be low decibel sounds like the volume that I'm talking at right now being painful or overwhelming. Or even an issue with your sense of skin or skin touch as far as um, texture. If your sense of touch is messed up and your texture is, is malfunctioning, the cotton shirt you're wearing could feel like sandpaper and it would shape the skin. So these are all things we have to be very, very careful with. Lastly, this is just purely theoretical stuff. I like talking about this because I like diving into the realm of theory and possibilities. But there have been studies done in which they have theorized the possibility of a sixth sense that humans may have access to. So remember, there are five primary senses. There's hundreds of other uh, sub-senses, if you want to call them that. 
But what this could be associated with is this extrasensory perception, ESP. So I personally feel like there's a lot of paranormal stuff, a lot of weird stuff that happens that's hard to just brush it off as these are all crazy people. I feel like in a lot of circumstances, there's things that we just can't explain yet scientifically. And it could be that certain people have a higher sensitivity to things that others can't experience. So that could explain some of it. Again, hard to, hard to prove this by science. And then the last thing here, recent studies have shown that humans may have an innate ability to detect magnetic fields. Now, this isn't like magneto level stuff, right? This is the ability to detect the North and South Pole. So this has to do with your sense of direction. Some people naturally have a strong sense of direction. Uh, and you can already see this in other animals, birds, fish, whales. When they migrate, they know where to go at all times, not because of GPS, but because of North and South Pole directioning. So pretty interesting stuff, right? Okay, so I think that's where we're going to conclude with our census information. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll uh, we'll see you in the next set of videos. Have a good one.